Hi everyone, today I want to share some of my anamorphic solutions, lenses adapters that I use to achieve the anamorphic look with you. This is going to be a part one of hopefully a few parts because these are the current anamorphic lenses I have. And for now, let's have a look at what I have here. I'll take a look at each of these lenses separately and uh, we'll try to explain the benefits and downsides, the strong points of each of them uh, then we're gonna quickly talk about the ticket lenses that I usually use and uh, hopefully uh, if you're getting into anamorphic lenses you will find it useful so starting from the left here the smallest lens that you see is the Optex 69 it's a really good lens for shooting with a 16 by 9 sensor because once you unsqueeze the image you get quite a natural cinemascope aspect ratio. The highlights of this lens for me are the flares. This lens flares a lot. The flares are all over the place but they actually are really nice. The fans of JJ Abrams films will definitely love this lens. Some people might hate it because it does flare a lot but like I said the flares are pleasant. They don't feel too sharp or too digital, unlike some that you see on modern anamorphic solutions. For example, the uh, SLR Magic anamorphic adapter is a very similar adapter to what this is, and um, the flares on that are a bit too sharp, too intense for me. The biggest downside of this lens is that it's really soft uh, around the edges. You have to stop down the taking lens by quite a bit to uh, get decent sharpness around the edges from this lens so even at about f4 uh, you are not getting a perfectly sharp image across the frame uh, another nice thing about this lens is that uh, it's basically a single focus setup you put it on the front of your taking lens like one of this so basically using step rings you can mount it directly onto your taking lens and you've got your setup it's a very compact very lightweight setup then by doing the knob right there you can adjust uh, the lens according to your taken lens in your camera to make sure that everything is aligned perfectly and you're basically ready to go uh, you are doing all the focusing with the taken lens so there's no need to do double adjustment so you can do uh, pull focusing and all sorts of things like that basically normal operation uh, the only downside of this kind of setup is that uh, the closest focusing distance is quite poor, uh, it's around 3 meters. So you do need to add diopters if you want to get close-ups with this lens. This lens doesn't have a filter thread, so in theory, how would you add diopters to the front? Fortunately, by using uh, the step-down ring on the front and uh, some electric tape around there, I was able to add a filter thread really easily and I can use my uh, various close-up lenses on the optus on the front and get my close-ups uh, when I need to. So swiftly moving on to the next lens, this is the Isco widescreen 2000 which is 1.5 times stretch lens. So the stretch is a bit more dramatic with this lens. You get more black areas around the top and bottom of your frame. It's still reasonable, not too dramatic. It's really, really sharp. Probably one of the sharpest lenses in this lineup. The anamorphic lenses in general need to be stopped down. Not the actual lenses, uh, but the taken lenses that you use with them. For example, on f1.4 lens, I could get decent results uh, around f2, f2.8. I don't really have to step it down all the way to 4 like I would have to with this lens. And it has a really nice clean image. I really like the images this lens produces. This is again more or less a single focus setup because uh, you basically shoot through this lens. There's no focusing adjustment on the actual lens. All the focusing is again done with the taken lens. So this is again quite a compact and fairly lightweight setup that you can use without uh, extra support. You can just use the step down or step up rings for your lens, mount there directly, adjust the alignment, and you're ready to go. Again, this lens is quite poor on close focusing distance. It's about four or five meters. So you do really need to use diopters if you want to get any sort of close ups with this lens. Again, there's no filter thread on this lens but just a simple 62 to 67 or uh, 72 or 77 step up ring will work just fine it fits almost flush 
with the outside area of the lens and all I need to do is just add some electro tape around there and uh, then just push uh, the step up ring on top of that and it fits nice and snugly. I can add a few filters on there and they will not fall out. It's a nice secure filter thread right there. This is definitely one of my favorite anamorphic solutions that I currently have. But let's move on to the next one. And the next one that you see here is the Proscar 16. This was the first anamorphic lens that I bought myself. It was really cheap lens. It's uh, actually the cheapest lens out of this lot. You can get it for around $200, sometimes even less. And it's really not that much for any anamorphic lens. This is basically a, a two times stretch projection lens. With these lenses, as well as the uh, next two, you need to focus both with the taken lens and the anamorphic lens. So once you mount it on your taken lens, you then need to choose same uh, focusing distance on the taken lens and then same focusing distance on the anamorphic lens. So this can be an absolute pain to use, unfortunately. It's possible to use it. I've seen some amazing results done with such setups, but it needs patience, uh, time, a workflow that uh, works for a certain person. Unfortunately, you can't do any rack focusing with such setup because each of the lenses has to be focused individually. But as far as image quality, this lens produces really pleasant anamorphic look, very pleasant organic looking flares. It flares more than the uh, ISCO right here, uh, but less than the optics. It's kind of a nice middle ground between the two. The sharpness though is not the best. You do need to step down to about f2.8 or f4 on a 1.4 lens to get the best sharpness out of it. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily soft around the edges. It's just not a really sharp lens. Uh, but once the taken lens is topped down quite a bit, you do get a nice sharpness out of it. And the character that this lens has is absolutely beautiful. It's a very good starter lens. So the highlights of this lens are good for me. It's character, uh, it's affordability, really nice overall image quality. Uh, but it does have its own downsides like every lens here. For example, there is again no filter thread, uh, but I did add one here quite easily with some glue and a 49 to 55 step up ring and it works like a charm now. Also to mount one of these onto your taking lens you can't simply use a step up or step down ring. You need to buy one of the clamps like this one, clamp it inside there and then you can screw your clamp into your taking lens. So it's not as straightforward as the two lenses I have right here. The next lens that I want to show you is the Koa Vidoscope Super 16, which is a very similar lens to Prosca 16 in many ways. It uh, works exactly the same with the double focusing setup. You need exactly the same clamp to mount it onto your taken lens, but this lens is sharper than Prosca and uh, you can mount slightly wider taken lenses onto the Koa. The Proscar needs at least a 58 millimeter lens for Super 35 sensor. And if you go full frame, you need to go even higher. With this one, you have slightly more flexibility. You can go slightly wider on this. Uh, so it does have uh, its own advantages over the Proscar. It's also a bit more expensive, but not that much more expensive. You can uh, get one of these for a similar price. It's definitely a very interesting lens and uh, also a very good lens uh, to start with. I shot some test footage with this lens and I do like the images that it produces as well. It has a very nice anamorphic character. If I didn't mention this already, this is a two times stretch lens, same as the Proscar 16. So both of these create a very, very dramatic aspect ratio when shot on 16 by nine sensor. So you basically have massive black bars on top and bottom of the frame when you unsqueeze the image. So it's not exactly perfect for shooting with a 16 by 9 sensor, but this as well as the Proscar and the Schneider lens that you'll see in a second are really good lenses to shoot on 4x3 
sensor or 4x3 mode, which is the perfect mode for two times stretch anamorphic lenses. So you still get all the dramatic characteristics of the anamorphic lens, uh, like that oval bokeh, which is again found mostly on two times stretch anamorphic lenses. And you get all the flares and everything, but the aspect ratio is not as dramatic. Uh, the aspect ratio is actually uh, similar to what you get with the optics uh, on the 16 by 9 sensor. And the last actual anamorphic lens that you see here is the Schneider Cinelux 2x stretch lens. As you can see, it's a very unusual lens. For starters, it's gold. Uh, it also has no focusing ring and um, you just don't really know what to do with it. And I wouldn't really know what to do with it if I didn't buy uh, the next thing that you see here, which is a focus module. We'll come to it in a second. Uh, but uh, first, let's quickly talk about the Schneider. We have the actual focus adjustment right there on the top, which is done with the Allen key. So there's no way you can actually use this lens um, in any proper shooting situations where you need to adjust your focusing quickly. Obviously, you can't rock focus as well because uh, this is, in theory, a double focusing setup where you adjust your taking lens and then you adjust the Schneider. But because you actually have to adjust from the front, uh, there is just no way to use it normally and I wouldn't really consider this lens like I said until I got this thing now I have use for it and I actually quite like it it's actually quite a sharp lens possibly the sharpest out of the lot you don't have to step down your taking lens much at all to get sharp images out of this lens same as Isco widescreen 2000 it doesn't flare a lot which can be a good thing for some because not everyone likes anamorphic flares but overall, it actually creates quite a nice image. Uh, maybe it lacks a bit of character. The Proscar and the Koa right here obviously have more character. They have more of that kind of vintage -y look. This is a more modern look, which is not always a bad thing. There are projects that really benefit from such clean look. They don't always need flares and vignettes and all sort of things like that, which can be nice, but not, not every time. So uh, there is definitely use for this lens and it's not actually that expensive and uh, it's actually a really nice lens if you have some sort of uh, focusing solution for this lens. This um, really brings us to the focusing solution for this lens and uh, this is the uh, FM lens. When I first saw this lens on the internet I couldn't really figure out what it's supposed to do. It's not an anamorphic lens, it's not a taking lens, so what is it? Well it is what it says on the tin it's a focus module basically you put an anamorphic lens inside this lens and this creates a single focus solution you set your taking lens to infinity and uh, your anamorphic lens inside the focus module is also set to infinity and all you need to do is just focus with the module it's not uh, the cheapest solution out there but this in combination with schneider is still quite a bit cheaper even than the cheapest uh, vintage anamorphic cine lens out there that would provide you with a proper single focusing setup so even though it's not that cheap i think it's still really good value for money it's a serious bit of kit and uh, you actually can fit in quite a few anamorphic lenses inside obviously the schneider that uh, this was initially designed for but uh, lenses like Proscar also fit inside. I actually shot a test video with a Proscar inside the FM, which allowed me to basically focus with FM, get the rack focusing and all sorts of things that I would love to get with this lens. Kowa that you see here will fit inside the FM as well, but I think uh, I will have to remove uh, this focusing ring. Maybe just this outer part if it uh, comes off, I'm not sure yet because I haven't tried. The Isco widescreen 2000 is supposed to fit inside the FM as well, but uh, this is more or less a single focusing setup already, so I wouldn't worry uh, about fitting that inside the FM too much. Focusing module is obviously the best for something like the Schneider and some of the other two times anamorphic lenses that will fit inside, which are pain to use otherwise. So the highlight of the focus module for me is the ability to use those really nice two times uh, stretch projection lenses that are really difficult to use otherwise. Uh, the downsides of the FM for me uh, is the size. So I have to use a lens support with it. I basically have to use a whole rig 
which does look nice, but it's not exactly a run and gun um, solution. And sometimes you just wanna quickly fit a lens on the front of your taking lens and just go. And this is not good for that. The Optics and Isco y 2000 are much better solution for that. But on a serious shoot, we have a crew and maybe there's more time uh, to set up a proper rig. I would definitely uh, shoot with the Schneider and FM or uh, one of the other anamorphic lenses inside FM because uh, FM allows me to get focusing all the way from about half a meter to infinity without adding any diopters or uh, any refocusing with any of the lenses. Basically I just have one lens and I can focus from my closest distance to infinity and I don't need to worry about any filters or anything else and for professional shooting where you can allow yourself to have a rig is definitely a great solution. So these are all of my anamorphics that I have for now. When I have a new lineup I will share that with you. Um, but before we end this video I just want to share my uh, taking lenses that I usually use with anamorphic lenses. The first one is the Canon FD 50mm 1.4. This is the lens that I use the most when shooting with anamorphics. I find it to be a great taking lens. I actually love this lens as is. I use it almost daily for all sorts of shoots from personal to professional and I just love this lens full stop. Second lens is obviously the best lens of them all, the Helios 44-2, which again is a great lens on its own. It has bags of character, absolutely amazing flares and bokeh. And when you use one of these with an anamorphic lens, you create even more magic. So you take in the best from the Helios and you add in uh, the characteristics of the anamorphic, including the anamorphic flares, and it's just pure magic. The downside of that is that there's a lot of that magic and basically just bursting with character. Some of the projects, again, will not need this much character. They will not need um, as many flares. Some of the projects will need a more subtle look. And this is where this might be an overkill. This is where uh, something like a Canon FD uh, 51.4 or maybe even Zeiss Contacts or, you know, some of the more subtle lenses will uh, give you a better look. Uh, but these are basically the two that I like on uh, Super 45 uh, sensor cameras. Um, most of these lenses cover uh, these uh, two lenses, so I do really enjoy using them. And the last thing that you see here is the clamp that I mentioned already. This one is a red stand clamp that I got on eBay. There's also a Vid Atlantic clamps that you can buy on eBay. If you have one of the more unusual anamorphics, uh, this is where you need to get to use uh, your morph lens with your taking lens. Anyway, I've been waffling on for way too long. It's time to wrap up this video. To anyone who stuck around until the end, thanks a lot for watching this video and I'll see you in one of my next ones.